What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are doing well today. And boy, are we learning some interesting things from Seattle Sports Radio lately. I know, it's crazy. Usually I don't really speak about Seattle Sports Radio that much. I don't listen to them that much. I don't think there's a ton to uh, glean from Seattle Sports Radio most of the time. So... A lot of time I just feel like it's something to listen to if you've got a commute. Now, I used to listen to 710 on my way to work, but it uh, been several years since I've really tuned in on them, and usually I just feel like they don't explore topics that are all that interesting or innovative or you know anything that really makes me think about things. But the last couple days, I'll tell you, it's been, uh, it's been pretty enlightening. We had the Pete Carroll thing, which I made a couple videos on. Obviously, a lot of people did not care for my perspective, even after I tried to clarify it, which, hey, I'm totally fine. I felt the need to clarify it, because I think a lot of people didn't understand what I was saying, but now that it's said, it's uh, it's said, and people can either like it or not, agree with it or not, doesn't really matter to me that much. But uh, I want to talk about this one as well, and this is obviously something that happened uh, yesterday morning, so... I think most people are pretty aware of it, but uh, I didn't really get the opportunity to really grasp this and really understand the magnitude of what is said here until later. So I'm making the video a little bit late. My bad. Usually I try to jump on something like this a little bit quicker. But um, yeah, KJ Wright went on, I think it was uh, 77, uh, I think it was 770, it was the Brock and Salk. And he offered up his own take on why things are going so bad with the Seahawks right now. And here's the thing, guys. K.J. Wright, I love K.J. Wright. He's one of my favorite players who was part of that legendary run of amazing defense in Seattle from 2012 to 2020. Uh, I'd say 2016, really. But um, when it comes to talking about the Seahawks, I've always kind of kept him a little bit at arm's length. I mean, some of the things he says are interesting, but I'm very aware of the fact that he spent a vast majority of his NFL career playing under Pete Carroll. He achieved greatness under Pete Carroll. He won a Super Bowl with Pete Carroll. He made a Pro Bowl with Pete Carroll. He became, you know, not a Hall of Fame caliber player, but a really, really good player over an extended period of time for the Seahawks under Pete Carroll. And when it comes to issues concerning Pete Carroll and what he's doing, I don't trust him to be um, unbiased. I don't trust him to be completely rational because I'm sure there's a kinship there. So when he came out with this stuff, it caught me off guard. So KJ went on Brock and Salk yesterday and he said a lot of things about the Seahawks right now. And I'm not going to go through all of it. You can definitely go listen to it. They posted it on YouTube, uh, Seattle Sports Radio. And um, there are many other videos that kind of paraphrase him probably in even more detail than I'm about to. But I want to talk about some of the things he said because I'm genuinely surprised he went as far as he did. And I understand that within what he's saying are also pretty heavy criticisms of players. But I am surprised at how much he did go at Pete Carroll here as well. That, that's how I interpret this. And I did not expect that. So there, there are really four things that K.J. Wright said that I want to cover in this video. Um, number one, one of his initial points was there are not enough leaders on this team. He said that on a, an NFL team, you want at least four real leaders. Now, the other guys can be whatever. You're going to have your guys like D.K. Metcalf. You're going to have your guys like a Jamal Adams, you're going to have some guys who are just there to play, you're going to have young guys, you're going to have rookies, you're going to have players who are just kind of hired guns, but what he said was, you need four leaders, and he doesn't believe the Seahawks have four leaders, he thinks that Bobby Wagner is a leader, and he's not sure about anybody else, he did say he thought Jaron Reed was a leader, which that makes sense, he's a longtime NFL veteran, and maybe... Maybe Quandre Diggs. Either way, that's not four. So that was the first thing he said, which, I mean, I, I can buy it. Like, you think about the other players on that team, there really aren't a lot of other guys because we are, in many ways, a younger team. And some of the older players, like Leonard Williams, just got here. 
And then you've got a guy like a Noah Fant, who's a veteran, but he doesn't really get involved enough on the field um, to really be considered a leader, I think. Like, do you consider Nick Ballore to be a leader because he's a veteran presence and he does between two Ballores or whatever? Not really. So I don't think that really lines up either. So, yeah, the first point that KJ said was we don't have enough leaders. And he spoke about how during the Legion of Boom era, the players held each other accountable for, to to each other. And right now that's not happening. So that's a little bit of a player criticism. But <clears throat> just to discuss that point, I, I think there's some truth that, there, which is why you're seeing some of the things that you are seeing with the team right now. I don't know what you do to fix it. I don't think you can force somebody to be a leader. Like, um, KJ Wright was asked if he thought Geno Smith was a leader, and he made it very clear that he thought, no, not at all. Geno Smith is not a leader. But how can you force somebody to become a leader? The answer is you don't. You get guys who just are made up of the right stuff to become a leader on your team. And that's something that's going to have to be taken care of in the offseason. It's too late. You're not going to acquire a leader now. You're not going to pull Richard Sherman out of retirement for the last four weeks and have him be your leader. And I don't know what you do because you don't have a lot of money. Um, if you go in free agency to sign veterans, they're going to be, to a certain extent, hired guns because they just got there. Who knows if they're going to be leaders. And the guys on this team who you probably expected to be a leader, um, apparently they're not really filling the role. Guys like Quandre Diggs. I would have 100% thought that Quandre Diggs was considered a leader on this team. But according to K.J. Wright, he doesn't really think so. So that was the first point. Not anything we can do about that, and it's going to be hard to figure out. Uh, this is one reason why, even though I know Wagner is diminished, I'm reticent to let him go this offseason because I do think there's value there, and he might be the finger in the dike. And if Wagner goes and there's no leadership, it could get really bad. It's already bad, but I do think it can get at least a little bit worse. Also, of note, he doesn't seem to think there are any leaders on the offense, which obviously there's a lot of young players on the offense. Guys like Cross, guys like Lucas, guys like Charbonnet, guys like Walker. Uh, you would look to maybe lock it to be a leader, but apparently KJ doesn't seem that way. Uh, some people would say that a quarterback needs to be a leader. Not necessarily true, but maybe on this team we... Gino doesn't have that leadership ability that we would uh, that we would desire, so that's going to be something that's really hard to deal with. It's you, you can't just call one eight hundred leader and get a new leader for your team. But uh, the second point, and this is where things started to get really interesting, I think, the really compelling. The second point that KJ Wright made was that the players on the team have tuned Pete Carroll out, and they're not listening to him anymore. He basically said. It's in one year and out the other. They don't really care what he has to say. They don't believe in him, and they don't have his back. And obviously, that's not necessarily a criticism of Carroll, but the implication here is that Carroll has lost the locker room, and also the locker room has lost Pete Carroll. Uh, he doesn't really like coaching these guys that much, and they don't really like being coached by him. Pete Carroll has been here for a very long time now. What is this, year 14? Something like that, year 14, year 13. And they say that at a certain point, players just stop listening to you. Um, Larry Bird believed in changing head coaches every three seasons in the NBA because he was like, after three years, the players don't respect you. They don't care about you. You got to get somebody else. Could be something like that happening here. So that that's coming from K.J. Wright, by the way. And he, you know, I believe he still has his relationship with Wagner. He probably still has other relationships within that locker room. He was playing on this team a few years ago. It wasn't that long ago K.J. Wright was an important player on the Seahawks. So I'm sure he's not just talking out of his butt here. He's actually got some reason to believe the things that he says. So for him to say Carroll's lost the locker room, I don't think that's ever been implied or said about Carroll before by anybody that is worth taking seriously. There have been moments in previous years where I wondered if Carroll was losing the locker room, but to hear it from somebody like K.J. Wright, sounds like there's something legit here, and K.J. Wright went as far to say that he thinks the next four weeks will determine whether or not this era of Seahawks football is over. He thinks that if the next four weeks go badly, 
that could be the end of Carroll. That could be the end of a lot of the um, pieces on this team. I assume everybody who isn't on a rookie contract, plus maybe a guy like a DK Metcalf. Um, he, he basically said, if the next four weeks don't indicate that the players are starting to, at the very least, take Carroll seriously and listen to him and actually believe in his system, believe in what he's saying, then he thinks that either Carroll will have to go or I guess the implication is pretty much all the players have to go. And there's a saying in um, sports, you can't fire the whole team, so you fire the coach. So basically what K.J. Wright is saying is that if the next four weeks don't go well, and we're not even talking about making the playoffs, we're just talking about the team buying in to Pete's philosophy, that could be it. And it could be a... More not not so much a matter of Pete getting fired. It could not even be a matter of Pete retiring. It could just be a matter of Pete resigning because he's sick of this and he doesn't want to have to deal with it for another year. I have long said that I don't believe that Pete Carroll can be moved off this team right now. I don't. I don't get the sense that he wants to retire like he's just done with football and he's sick of doing this. I don't get the sense that there's any urgency from up above to maybe push him out. But that is something that could that is something that could actually change things because uh, if he's getting sick of it and he knows that he can't turn the whole roster over this offseason, like he's gonna have to keep most of these guys and they just don't respect him or listen to him anymore, then there isn't a heck of a lot you can do at that point unless you just feel like beating your head into a brick wall. So I have been very reticent to believe that, there was any way that Carroll was not the head coach in 2024, but KJ Wright's basically saying he thinks this is it. Uh, the final point he made was uh, concerning accountability. He believes that at the very least, the team is not indicating publicly that there is any accountability in the organization right now. Like the most we got is Pete Carroll saying on the radio that these players are messing up and a lot of people said in my video, hey, that's what accountability looks like, and I'm not sure I believe it. Accountability would be benching some of these players. Accountability would be doing something different. Accountability would be actually trying to address the problem instead of just saying the problem. So when K.J. Wright looks at something like the Jamal Adams situation, where Jamal Adams made a very rude tweet to a member of the New York uh, Jets media team, making fun of his wife, and he wasn't punished at all. We just had Pete Carroll say, oh, yeah, we, we talked about it. And then Jamal Adams apparently didn't feel cowed by that at all to where he just went out there and was like, yeah, I don't regret what I did. He basically said it looks like there was no accountability there. So the players look at that and say, hey, we can do whatever we want to do, I guess. We're never going to get punished. We can blow assignments. We can freelance. We can disobey the rules of the defense. We can do anything. And there's no accountability. So he basically said, you got to get everyone's attention. You got to cut somebody. You got to bench somebody. You got to mix it up. And that'll maybe get the guys to listen to you. So that's a, quite a substantial set of uh, statements from K.J. Wright. That's quite a bit. And this is uh, the first time I'm even, I've even entertained the possibility that this season could be the death knell for Pete Carroll. It's one of those things where I think he wants to coach this team for a long time. I think that there is a desire from the ownership to keep him around as long as they're around. But K.J. Wright, I mean, he didn't say it. But the implication that I'm getting from K.J. Wright's statements are that Pete's uh, sick and tired of these guys not doing what he wants them to do. Now, I say he has a lot to do with that. He's asking them to do things they're not good at. He's putting them in bad situations. But the bottom line is, at that point, something has to go. And if this continues for the next month, then either Pete Carroll has to go away, or he has to dump a lot of these players and bring in other players who will do what he says and actually buy into his system. And that second thing is really, really hard to do. All right, I will see you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think. I'm just trying to figure out what KJ Wright's getting at here. He paints a, a very bleak picture of the Seahawks locker room right now. 
but I did find the fact that he went at Carroll a little bit interesting. 